thank you very much. And I, I first of all want to thank um, um, Chairman Whitehouse and Chairman Cardin for their effort. They, they uh, as I have observed here, have been real champions on this issue. I know um, Senator Whitehouse has, has additional uh, a, a spurring effort from the home front. His, his wife is a, a PhD scientist, I think, in this area. I've been on trips with him where I've learned a lot from her, and I hope that she's watching today and seeing that you're doing a good, uh, good job here, Sheldon, on, the, on this front. Um, they, let me, first of all, uh, follow up a little bit on what Senator Cardin asked about. You, um, when you talk about research, I, I think the first issue is, do you have any idea how much we're doing in this area uh, in, in dollar amount it, across the federal government to look specifically uh, at the, uh, the acid buildup in the ocean? As Senator, I know that EPA's budget for 2010 for research on ocean acidification was about $2 million. Uh, I Which isn't much, right? It, it's a yeah. relatively small amount. This is a new area of research for us, and uh, but that's what we uh, uh, did in or are doing in 2010. Uh, I don't have handy the budget for the entire federal government. We can okay. get back to you. Well, that, then, no, that would be great. That would be great. And, and it, are, do you have any numbers on the worldwide effort? Is there any cooperative effort in terms of, of uh, sharing research, pooling money, trying to do that? And one, one of the reasons I ask that is I, I think it's so important when we get into these scientific issues that, that we share the science and that there's a a, we build the consensus through sharing the science, and I'm wondering on e either one of you what's happening there on that front. Uh, uh, Senator, first of all, I, I got the number on the um, the uh, federal budget, which is uh, uh, one one billion four hundred no one million <laughs> one billion four hundred twenty six thousand. Um, uh, in 2008 and 1289000 in 2009. Um, and, and that's specifically targeted to um, the, the buildup of uh, CO2 and acidification of the ocean? Yes, sir. It's uh, ocean chemistry uh, and biological impacts associated with ocean acidification. Uh, and that's uh, EPA, the Marine Man... Man Managed Mineral Service, uh, NASA, NOAA, NSF, and USGS. And we're all working together through the Ocean Acidification Task Force. We're also coordinating with uh, other entities, uh, research entities across the world through that effort. Uh, so it is a coordinated effort. It's a new effort uh, under the new law. Uh, and um, uh, it's, so we are developing a research plan now. Is, is there... On these countries that are cooperating around the world, is there participation by most of them, is the, or is this just the countries that, that are on the ocean? What, what can you say about that? Uh, my guess is that coastal uh, and ocean coastal. Uh, com countries are more oh, involved, yeah, but I yeah. don't know the full extent. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, you also mentioned in your, um, your testimony the, the global nature of the toxic chemicals that are released into the oceans. Uh, and the need for ratification of global treaties such as the Persistent Organic Pollutants Treaty, the POPs Treaty as it's known. Can you describe some of the specific chemicals that these uh, global treaties look to curb on a global basis? Yes, sir, I will, sure. I will answer that. The, um, many of the original chemicals that were listed on the treaty are chemicals, uh, for example, the, the organochlorine pesticides, which have largely been regulated in the United States. Well, they almost, they've been totally regulated in the United States. Um, some of the more um, recent additions to the, those lists include chemicals that are on our, our list of action plans, such as the sh short-chain chlorinated paraffins um, and the PBDEs. And so we're beginning to see chemicals being listed without the U.S. participation in, in those treaties, which are um, have yet to be fully um, evaluated and regulated in this country. So what you all are urging is that we, we ratify these treaties and, and move forward with the countries around the world, and, the, and that we're slow to do that at this point. 
That's correct. We're, there, there are problems with not being at the table. One, because there may be very important uses that we'd like to see maintained because they're very important to the country. Um, and so our voice is not being heard there. And we're also, it's, it's not allowing us to be global leaders on the issues of those chemicals for which we think quick action is necessary. Thank you uh, both for your testimony. Very good panel. And once again, I appreciate the hard work of the two chairmen on this.